Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It is, guess who it is? Guess, guess, guess. It's Whitney Prude, and she is a author, and she also has recently wrote her new book, and she's going to tell you all about it today. And she's also part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our show, and so check it out. And you'll uh, you'll love her podcast. She has amazing episodes, and check her out because she gives great advice and she has such great insight. Now I'm really excited for you. I know you recently this book was just recently launched not too long ago. Can you tell me a little about it because it it's just something that I think so many women need to really have in their life and they lack. So tell us yeah. a little about. It. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean the the title of the book is Self Love for Women. Um, 10 minutes a day to build self-confidence or build self-worth, boost confidence and embrace who you are. And I mean, those, those three just in the title, right, are three really important factors that a lot of women struggle with, right? Oh, yeah. And then the 10 minutes a day is important as well, because we always think that we're too busy. Life is yeah. too busy. I don't have time for me, right? So 10 minutes a day, everybody has 10 minutes somewhere in their day that they can dedicate to themselves. But quite honestly, I mean, I, I never intended to write a book about self-love. That was, I've always wanted to write a book, but never, never, I never intended on writing a book as, about self-love. Um, and I, you know, I'm a health and wellness coach. I have a 16 week program where I help women to, to lose weight, but keep it off long-term and, and, you know, a holistic perspective. So like, why wouldn't I write something about that or write my story, right? Mm -hmm. As I've been, as I've been enrolling, you know, hundreds of women into my program, the underlying theme of what women really gain throughout our program is self-love. Yeah. And when you genuinely love yourself, when you genuinely care about who you are, you value and respect yourself, it's pretty easy to start prioritizing yourself, to prioritize your health, to make the healthy choices, um, your motivation comes from inside of you, as opposed to what everybody else thinks or how your body is going to look or how people are going to perceive you or the fear of, you know, what comes if you don't do it right. When you genuinely care about yourself and your motivation comes from inside of you and you're showing up for you, right. It becomes significantly easier to make those healthy choices. It's just a part of who you are. Right. I, you know, I, I find, I see so much, like, especially in moms, I find that moms tend to lose themselves along the way. Like I, so many moms, like before they had children, you know, they were taking care of themselves. They were keeping up the, you know, dressing nights and watching their weight and, you know, trying to keep a nice yep. appearance. And then they have children and they get this, this notion in their head that, you know, it's, you know, I have to put my children first, you know, they feel guilty if they put themselves first and they totally neglect themselves. And I find that you can see it. You can see them, they're drained. Some women put a lot of weight on, they start looking a little bit frugal, you know, they're not dressing as nice and not taking care of themselves as well as they did previously. And, you know, I always feel like if you can't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of everybody else? You know, do you feel that you know that you see moms especially a lot of times you know kind of themselves yeah. yeah yeah and and uh, there's well there's an analogy that I I absolutely love to share because it kind of it helps it kind of click for people I always ask people you know when was the last time you were on an airplane and you have the flight attendant right talking about that oxygen mask that drops down out of the ceiling and what do they tell you to do Put on your own oxygen mask before yeah. you assist anyone else. Right. And it applies 100% to life. And yes, you're, you're absolutely right that, you know, being a mom is one of those uh, instances that's so, so common. It's like mom syndrome, right? It's like all of a sudden you get put on the back burner. Kids are number one. Husband's number two. Work is number three you know, friends and family and religion or whatever else is number four and five, and you never even make it onto the priority list. Yeah. But 
if you really think about it, when they talk about the oxygen mask, right? So this is, this is in a very short period of time. If something did happen and you lose oxygen, nobody has any oxygen, right? If you take I, the time to put oxygen masks on like four members of your family, yeah. at that point you pass out and like you're, you're done. Yeah. It's over. And so what we don't realize is even though it's over a much longer period of time, what we don't yeah. realize is that as we're putting oxygen masks on everybody else in our lives, mm -hmm. we are slowly declining. We are slowly damaging our health. We are slowly, um, you know, worsening our, our life expectancy, our quality of life in the future, where eventually we're not going to be able to show up for those people anymore. Yeah. So we it's don't see the day-to-day -day repercussions, right? Because it's slow. Yeah. But it absolutely 100% happens. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and I, I think people don't, sometimes I wonder if people are, do they realize it's actually happening to them? Or are they just so involved with everybody else in their life that they're totally oblivious? I, I've seen people just like, even mentally, their their mental stability starts to um, kind of like uh, decrease because they're so mentally drained that they're not they're not thinking clearly. They might be their moods and behaviors might be off because they're just so involved with everybody else's life, but their own, and they're trying to they're trying to be the savior of everybody else, and then all of a sudden they start to fall apart. And I don't even know, sometimes I wonder, are they aware that they're falling apart? Are they aware that the, the root cause is because they're not giving themselves adequate attention and self-love and self-care? Yep. Yeah, and a lot of times, no. We have no clue that it has to do with, you know, a lack of self-worth, a lack of, you know, really showing up for ourselves, prioritizing ourselves. It doesn't even, most women that I talk with doesn't even cross their mind. Right. And I think it's also in the corporate world and the business world also, you get yep. so involved with your business or your job that you are neglecting yourself. You, you know, your work, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you know, you might have your husband or your spouse or your partner there and your kids and right away, it's like dinner time. Okay, what are we going to make? You know, what are we going to do for dinner? You know, and then you have like a load of laundry and the laundry is starting to pile up. So then you're trying to do that. Then you're trying to do the dishes. And then, you know, and then by the time you go to bed, you're exhausted. You don't even get to enjoy the rest of the night. And then you're up and about the next day, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, on the weekends, then you're going to soccer games or football games or, you know, softball games. And where is there time for you, you know? It, it's like, it's like a, a, an endless, you know, cycle, like for those women, like what would be your, your you know, step one what, to get them back into their place? Cause you say you, you could do this in 10 minutes. What would be step one? Step one is a mindset shift, which requires you to start to place yourself first on the priority list <laughs> because most women don't even put themselves on the priority list. Right. So a mindset shift of actually putting yourself as number one on the priority list. And I will tell you, I mean, and I'm sure that there are many women out there that are like, no, 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 there's no way like kids first, kids first, kids first. But yeah. I, you know, refer back to the oxygen mask. You have to put on your own oxygen mask, right? So we have to start having this mindset shift. That's step number one that you actually deserve to be number one on the priority list and you should be number one on the priority list in order to be healthy, in order to be able to show up for your family, um, for your spouse, your kids, everybody that you wanna show up for, Yeah, you need to be number one, okay? So that's the first thing is the mindset shift. Yeah. And then it's kind of interesting because once you start shifting your priorities and you you're now sitting at number one, right? Right. Then you can start to look at everything else in your life because I think that a lot of women, whether it's work or whether it's you know for their kids of like, okay, I'm managing the the soccer team and I'm 
you know, I'm on the PTA board and I'm, you know, doing something for the local church or community center, or, you know, they reached out and they asked me to do it and I just can't say no. Um, we, we need to start going through the things that we have in our life. And yeah. it's, if it's compromising our ability to put ourselves at number one, then we have to start filtering those things out. We have to start saying no. Okay. Right. There will be times in your life when your kids are grown and they're gone, where you can pick up that, you know, that community position, or you can, you know, there will be times in life where you can do those types of things, but you, you have to really, you know, take a step back, look at your life, mm -hmm. shift your mindset and your perspective, put you at number one. And if there are things that are compromising your health, if you're not at your best health, if you're not eating healthy, if you're not at your healthy weight, if you're not exercising, if none of these things are fitting into your day, then you need to start saying no. Right. I think that's really important because I think so many women, even men, have a hard time saying no. Yep. And they feel so guilty about saying no. And it's okay to say no. What do you think about that? 100%. It is, it's more than okay to say no, right? Like we have to say no. You can't do everything. And you, you, you know, you just think about it's a, um, what's the, what's the quote I'm, I'm thinking of, um, uh, being, being good at, at one thing, but a master of like none, Yeah, uh, yeah. you I know, it's like, <laughs> you know, you know what I, you know what I'm talking about when you're spreading your thoughts, yourself so thin, yes, like barely trying to show up for all of these things you're not mm -hmm. actually showing up well, you're not showing up your best to any of those things. Right. So if you think that you can go to work and you can show up your best while you're doing all of these other extracurricular things that you feel guilty and, and that you can't say no to, right, you've got to start reconsidering because it is going to in fact you, uh, affect your performance in your job. It is yeah. going to affect uh, your relationship with your husband, because you're going to be ornery and you're going to be irritated and you're not going to have the mental capacity, right. To be able to be calm and collected and communicate appropriately. And with your kids, right. You're going to be irritated and they're going to want you to do things and you're not going to have the energy. So you're pushing them away and uh, go, you know, go do your own thing or go sit and watch TV or go out in the backyard. Right. But you're not engaging. You don't have the energy to be able to engage with them, to be able to be present with them. Um, to be active, uh, be an active part of their lives because you're trying to dip into so many things. So yeah. absolutely saying no is the number one thing that right. you can start doing for yourself. I love it. I, you know, I, I think that's so important and I'm glad you're stressing that because so many people have, have said that they feel guilty saying no, they feel like, you know, they, some, some people become pe people pleasers. Like they, you know, they just like, they have to say yes. They, because that extreme guilt comes over them because the whole life they've been trying to please other people. And then all of a sudden, you know, like their self-care goes out the door and they're they're drained they they're not taking care of themselves now we we focused on mindset what would be the next thing that you would suggest you got to start doing it <laughs> i always <laughs> like to <laughs> i always like to share an example of um, just like just thinking of a line of like the process of getting to where you want to go, right? So you start with the mindset. That's the at the base of everything. Right. And if you have this, if you have this mindset of like, okay, I want to get to this result of, you know, being super healthy, getting all of this weight off, living my absolute best life. But over here, your mindset is, oh, I have to please everybody. I can't let anybody down. Like, I feel like a failure because everything's not going perfectly. Like if you keep yourself stuck in this type of a mindset, right? Are you ever going to get to this result? Okay. So shifting the mindset, right? Making yourself the priority and realizing that you can actually do this, but you yeah. do have to make yourself a priority. And then the second step is taking the actions, right? Yes. 
You have Mm -hmm. to have the mindset. The mindset's going to lead you to the actions and the actions will lead you to the results. So, I mean, what are the actions, right? What are the first actions? You shift your mindset while saying no is an action, right? Mm -hmm. Shift your mindset. You start learning how to say no. One of the biggest actions that you can take, though, is allowing yourself to step into discomfort. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is saying no is really uncomfortable and you're going to feel really guilty and you're going to feel really bad right but the more that you do it and the more that you start prioritizing yourself yeah you you start to you know you start to build your own self-confidence your own self-worth your own you know putting yourself on the priority list so putting yourself into those uncomfortable situations Um, It might be, you know, starting to speak up for yourself, starting to actually share your opinions, starting to um, recognize that the way that you feel your feelings are valid and that you actually get to express your feelings, that you don't have to just succumb to everybody else's needs. You actually get to say, hey, like I'm crumbling. I can't do this anymore. Like I feel overwhelmed. I feel, you know, and being able to express those things that they're valid and that you deserve to be heard and that your opinion matters and that things need to change. Um, So those types of actions, like you have to start putting yourself into uncomfortable situations. Right. You have to to keep pushing and just allow yourself to sit in the discomfort. And the more that you do it, it's going to become more and more comfortable until you Mm -hmm. really start to develop an inner strength. This is who I am. This is what I want. I've got the mindset to get where I want to go. Doesn't mean that you can't be a good friend and show up for people and all of those things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to be healthy, you do really have to do all of these things. And you do have to prioritize yourself and you do have to speak up for yourself and be confident in yourself and believe that you can get there, right? right? So all of these things start going hand in hand, but ultimately the actions you have to take the steps or you're not going to move anywhere. So true. So true. Now, when you, when you start to take the actions, like what would be the first, first thing you do? So you have the mindsets, you, you learn how to say no, and then you, you, you get the divine courage to actually, you know, move forward and actually do it. And yeah. You know, what would be the the first thing afterwards that you that would probably be the best thing to start working on that will get you there? Yeah. Ten minutes. Ten minutes a day. And keep it like literally keep it that simple. Ten right. minutes a day. Okay. What am I going to do for ten minutes a day that prioritizes me, my well-being and my health? Right. That could be that you come home from work and you tell husband Mm -hmm. I need 10 minutes. I'm going to my room. You've got this. Mm -hmm. It might be, you know, so you, you go to your room and you do, you know, you do what you need to, whether that's, you know, just closing your eyes and breathing and allowing yourself to relax. Maybe you do meditation. Maybe, maybe you journal a little bit. Maybe you take a quick nap. Maybe, you know, there's a book um, that, that you're, that you're reading to kind of help lift you up and, um, maybe you need to call your mom or a best friend or, you know, it's just figuring out, yeah, you know, paying attention to your, your feelings, what you need, you know, this is how I feel. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what do I actually need? What do I right. need in order to, to meet that need and yes. take 10 minutes, prioritize mm-hmm. it every single day, 10 right. minutes. Even if it's sitting there literally doing nothing. And the reality right. is that most people actually have a hard time even spending 10 minutes with themselves. Yeah. Because you don't want to be in your head. You don't mm. want to know what's there. You don't want to address anything that's there. Right. So we yeah. keep ourselves so busy because a lot of times we're actually avoiding ourselves. Yeah. So 10 minutes, even if it's going for a walk for 10 minutes or taking 10 minutes to put together a healthy meal or it doesn't matter. Pick your thing. Yeah. Start with 10 minutes a day. And as you start to prioritize yourself, then, you know, once you master one thing of, okay, this is one thing I'm going to do for myself, right? 
yeah add in, you know add in another small element that you want to work on whether that's your physical health your mental emotional health your spiritual health whatever it is whatever you need right you start to very slowly and gradually just work one little thing at a time but start with 10 minutes and you know honestly people say oh 10 minutes that's nothing but it is and that's all you really need right. you know and you know i noticed when i i did something kind of similar where I would, you know, devout, devote like certain amount of time, maybe journaling or a certain amount of time meditating or a certain amount of time, just exercising a little bit. I felt so much better. I just cleared my mind. I felt good. I actually came to conclusions about certain things in my life. You know, it's just like little things, you know, can be so meaningful and people don't realize and you don't have to spend hours doing something in order to be successful and to have have great change. You could just be it could be very simple and people like simple. Nobody wants anything complex or overwhelming. You know, we want you want something short, sweet and simple. And what you're doing is short, sweet, and simple. And it can have such a huge impact. And I'm one to say that something like that could have a humongous impact on your life. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally it, it transforms people's lives just starting with 10 minutes a day. Cause even if you, I mean, even if you think about it, you come home from a really stressful day at work and you walk into, you know, husband and kids and your kids are all up in your face and, and, you know, screaming and mom this and mom that and blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, yep. if you can take 10 minutes and just calm yourself and collect yourself and feel like, you know, you can get, you can get yourself kind of brought back together. Yeah. Then potentially you've prevented, you know, that blow up, <laughs> right. um, you know, it's like you, you have the ability with prioritizing yourself to actually change the entire course of the rest of the evening. Uh, yeah. Your, you know, it's, it's just, it's very, very powerful. You know, I, I agree. I, I think what you're doing is amazing because I, I, you know, I've seen the transformation with people, you know, just, just by putting a little effort into themselves, you know, major things could definitely happen, you know, but it's consistency is I think too, is like, you know, people start something, they do it for a little while, then they stop, but they have to stay consistent. You know, they have to, I think like make it a routine, you know, and make it a part of your life. You know, what do yep. you think? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's really, I like, I like to use the term habit stacking, right? It's like you start with 10 minutes a day. I mean, you're starting to build a habit, right? That 10 minutes, yeah. whatever you create it to be is you're building a habit and then yeah. you're prioritizing yourself in that 10 minutes. Um, maybe, you know, once, once you master that 10 minutes, uh, maybe, you know, you add on a five minute walk or yeah. You know, and over time, as you, you know, once you master one, one thing and you're like, oh, okay, this is just kind of like my normal, it's not uncomfortable anymore. Like I'm showing up for myself, you know, then maybe, yeah. you, you know, maybe you, you add on another small thing. Right. And so, and then you, you give it time so that you can then master that. Right. right. And, and then once you've mastered, you know, now you've mastered two things and, yeah. and then we're going to add on one more. So within, you know, the, the idea the concept of habit stacking, this is really how you create long-term change. Yeah. Because if you try to do everything at once, you're just going to get even more overwhelmed. You're going to feel like a failure. You're going to feel like you can't do it. You're going to feel like you have no willpower. You can't follow through and nothing's possible. So why even try? Right. And so usually people will look at like a five minute walk and they're like, what's the point? Like it's useless. It's actually yeah incredibly powerful right and then five minutes becomes 10 and 10 minutes becomes 15 and then you've got you know your 10 minute me time you've got your 15 minute walk I mean you, you're doing pretty darn good at that point yeah. right and then mm -hmm. when you really start to shift your mindset and you're prioritizing yourself differently and you're starting to feel better then yeah. you're going to start wanting to make healthier choices. So then other things start to fall into place. You start to prioritize your nutrition a little bit more. You, right. start, to, you, know, you start to have a little bit more energy to actually prepare dinner at home as opposed to like, oh, let's just go to McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just do yeah. DoorDash or whatever. Um, but it's, it's a complete trickle down effect. And as you start with five minutes, you start with 10 minutes, 
Um, and, you know, you just slowly keep building these yeah. things. It actually ends up in massive transformation. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I totally believe that, you know, I think when people just by people giving like having just like little changes in their lives, they should also give themselves like a reward, you know, reward themselves, maybe a little self care, self love, maybe take a, a salt bath or something like that, you know, or, you know, put some essence, you know, some lavender and just like, you know, lay out and, you know, and, or, you know, and say to themselves, I'm worth it, you know, because I think sometimes I feel like a lot of people don't think they're worth it. And that, that's what holds them back too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I actually, I was on, I was on a call the other day and I was really with a, with a woman who wanted to lose weight. She had been through a lot of trauma, a lot of, you know, challenges in her life. And she was just, you know, she was talking about all of these things that are going on in her life and all of these things that are happening to her and all of these things. And, you know, and that's why, you know, she, she has the additional weight on and, and that she can't like there's no way to be successful and and i read this analogy that i thought i mean it it just fits so perfectly of like you're thinking about it's like you're on the you're on this boat right and you're out in the middle of the ocean and i mean when we go through challenges we go through trauma like right we get we get hurt okay so it's like within this boat right the boat hits a rock and like gets damaged gets hurt right and you, you right. end up with a hole in the boat yeah so now you're sitting in this boat and there's a hole in the boat and there's water pouring in to the boat. Okay. So we've got a bucket and we're, you know, we're scooping, we're scooping out the water, right? Yeah. But this becomes like our norm. We've got this hole, the water's coming in and we constantly have to keep scooping. Yeah. And then a storm comes and we've got these waves, right? And so life keeps happening and all of these things keep pouring in. And we're just like working even harder, right? To get this water out of the boat. I mean, we're literally almost drowning. Yeah. And we keep doing this. We keep doing it over and over and over again. We're like, I'm so busy and all of this stuff is happening and everything, you know, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing that I can change. And if we really stop and think about it, it's like, what do you have control over? Yeah. You can repair the hole. Mm-hmm. Yes. And once you repair the hole, mm -hmm. then your efforts actually amount to something. Then right. when you're scooping the water out of the boat, it stays out of the boat. Yes. And become lighter and lighter and lighter and more free. And instead of being a victim of life, of everything happening to you and there's no way out, right? You yeah. become in control of your life and your circumstances. And right. I think I just thought it was such a good, um, you know, just like visualization of, of what we get stuck in and feel like yeah. we're drowning and feel like we have no control when in mm -hmm. reality, what we need to do is we need to figure out like, why am I stuck? Yeah. How do I patch the holes? Yeah. So that my efforts can actually amount to something and that I can actually like climb my way out of this. Yeah. We have that power we're not we're not helpless right it's so true it's so true sometimes we we think we can't but we can you know I never say can't I say can I never say should it I say should you know and you have to really believe in yourself you know and and if you believe in yourself you know that's when things start to happen you know you really have to manifest for the positive and and really have you know, like you said, and give yourself that time for that self-care and that self-love. Because I think that's like a recharger. That's like a reboot in our life. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, I mean, if we, if you do it, if you, anyone that's listening to this, 10 minutes, take 10 mm -hmm. minutes, even if it's uncomfortable to just sit with yourself, yeah. force yourself to do it, put it in your calendar. If it's on the calendar, it happens, right? It's not negotiable. You don't, you know, it's like put it on the yeah. calendar at a specific time each day and it just, it happens. Like it's not negotiable. It it happens and follow right. through with it. And, yeah. and let it go, you know, for a couple of weeks and, and see what starts to change. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, if you had to take everything that we talked about in our conversation today, what are some really important things you'd like to emphasize on? Mindset. Mm -hmm. Mindset. It's at the, it's seriously, it's at the base of everything. Yeah. It's at the base of everything. And if we just thinking of that line that I talked about, if you continue to have a mindset where 
life is just happening to you and you don't have control and you're too busy and there's no time for you. And you know, you're just, you're failing at everything. And you know, it's like, you're helpless essentially. Yeah. Does that mindset get you moving forward to the actions that you need to take to get to the result that you want? Right. It doesn't. And so what you have to do first is you have to start shifting your mindset. You have to start realizing and accepting that you can be the number one priority and that you should be the number one priority in your life. Yeah. And so that's the base. That is the most important thing that you can do for yourself. Shift your mindset. You have control. You are capable and you are worth it. Yeah. Then start taking actions to move yourself to where you want to go. I love it. I love it. Now tell everybody where they can find your book. Yeah, absolutely. So my book is on Amazon. Um, so if you type in, I mean, if you type in Whitney Prude, it'll probably take you right there, but you can also, you know, type in the, type in the title self-love for women. Um, and you'll, you'll see it pop up. I love it. And also tell everybody about the different services that you provide also. Absolutely. So what I do is I have a 16 week program. I call it a whole health transformation program. So within that program, really, and truly what we focus on number one, is overcoming the mental and emotional barriers that are keeping you stuck. So a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today, because if we don't know what's going on below the surface, we will always keep circling back, no matter what diet we try, no matter, you know, you can do anything for a couple of months, but you're always going to come back to your innate behaviors and mentally what's driving your behavior, right? So Mm -hmm. first of all, we, we work to get to the root cause and help you to overcome those things. So that then as you get the physical results of, you know, the weight loss, Um, And getting, you know, getting the body that you really want, that you're able to maintain that for the long term, for the rest of your life, essentially, it becomes a a new lifestyle and you just keep living that way because it's, it's become a part of who you are and not just, you know, this, this quick fix that that you keep trying over and over and over again and getting nowhere. That's so true. Now, where can people find your website? Yeah, my website is www.myholeandhappylife.com. And my Instagram is the same. So at my whole and happy life. I love it. This has been amazing. And I'm so glad you wrote this book. I, I think it's well needed in our society. I think, you know, I can't tell you how many people I come across all the time that neglect themselves or don't think they're worthy of self-love. And, you know, it, 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 it just, it, it will destroy you. You know, if you don't take care of yourself and put yourself number one, it, you know, you won't be, you won't be happy first of all. And second of all, you will not be able to really give the love that you want to give to others. You know, it, it's just something that's so needed in our society that people need to take time out because imagine how happier people would be if they gave themselves a little time for themselves and, and gave themselves a little self-love and then they'll feel a little bit worthier. And like we were mentioned, self-esteem, they'll feel good about themselves. And you know, it's a life-changing transformational experience. And I love the fact that you, you've you knocked it down in 10 minutes, like just 10 minutes a day. And this is all you need. And it's so true. And you show step-by-step how to do it. So I, I love that. And I congratulate on that. That's amazing. I I think you're wonderful. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I look forward to our next episode together. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. I appreciate you. You have a great day. Thanks.